Yes, that's lay for you. A mind-blowing array of sights, sounds and smells. Ayurvedic massages from Kerala. Rajasthani puppets. Ganesha serenely meditating alongside Tibetan masks and Natarajas. Lay seems like a spiritual, cultural, aesthetic smorgasbord. But this awesome amalgamation, by the way, is nothing recent. For all its seeming inaccessibility through the centuries, Leh has been at the center of a complex network of trade routes. From Punjab to Central Asia, caravans carrying spices, tea and such other exotics took roughly two months to reach, traveling on these craggy mountainous roads. Buddhism also traveled the same way as did Islam. The rarefied air here, it would seem, has been perfect for the blending of influences, making Leh a halfway house for the world for centuries. In the labyrinth streets of its traditional bazaars, internet cafes rub shoulders with traditional crafts, even as women from nearby villages sell fresh vegetables and fruits all in a row, while constantly spinning pashmina yarn with their hands, as they have since eons. Except that the vegetables now reflect transnational tastes. Leh truly is as cosmopolitan as it can get, a place where people from everywhere feel at home and welcome. Perhaps nowhere else in the world will one find a sick gentleman, run a German bakery, bake the most incredible pumpernickel, which is consumed by a dedicated clientele of expat Israelis. Even though Ladakh in general, and Leh in particular, defeat all metaphors, as members of the Ladakh theatre organization Leh rehearsed for an adapted Shakespeare play at the Shanti Stupa one evening, all barriers of language, culture, civilization disappeared. As the universality of human emotions took center stage, the result was magic. Sheer magic. <laughs>